This is a solar install and we originally completed this work five weeks ago. The original plan was to prep everything so that all we needed to do was come back and fit the nice shiny new Libby battery. However, it didn't work out quite like that. In this video, we're gonna show you what went wrong, why we're here today trying to fix it, along with a few other minor changes to accommodate the beautiful new Libby battery. So make sure you like and subscribe and let's get into it. A headache. So five weeks ago we got all the panels on, the DC cables down to where the inverter will be and the solar skirt bird protection all on. The roof work was done, buttoned up, ready to go. However, a few days later we got an update from MyEnergy saying that they've changed the spec of the inverter. The maximum amount of panels that you can connect per string is less than what they originally set. So that means that instead of one string we now have to have two strings to accommodate these eight panels. That means panels off, extra DC cables down to the inverter, and it's a bit of a headache. But at Artisan, we're always up for a challenge. So today we're gonna to whip these panels off, get the new string cables plugged in and connected, and then we're gonna fit the Libby. Is that a hammer for ants? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's an ant hammer. It needs to be at least three times they, bigger than this. What is this? They call it a toffee hammer. That's smaller than a toffee hammer. It actually sure. comes quite in handy when you're clipping little twin and earths and stuff in a tight space. I use it to smash my keyboard when my computer's not working. So originally we ran one conduit down here with one pair of string cables. A couple of weeks ago the guys had to come back and run in the extra string cables. So two string cables sets now in, but we've got to also then add another DC isolator. So we've got one here at the moment, we're going to need to add a second one, and there's not much space. So probably what we're gonna to have to do is move that down to here, add the second DC isolator there, and then we've got this problem, which is that we need to add a second DC SPD for the second string. However, I don't know whether it's gonna fit in that enclosure. We've ordered a larger enclosure just in case, but that larger enclosure is mahoosive, and I don't think it's gonna fit there. So we've got a little bit of fine tuning and adjusting to do. The Libby's just arrived, so John's getting that open. Let's have a look. It's handy to have a bit of packing wood knocking around. You know it's a sturdy product when they've got wood in the box. Bend your knees, knock your back. Good morning. Three. One, two, three. Up. There we go. All right. Let's just take it straight. straight. Yep. The first thing we need to do is get the solar skirt off the edge of these, these panels here. Once the solar skirt's off, we'll probably take the bottom panel off first. That will give us easier access to get the top panel off. And we've just done a safety talk on the ground about the potential hazards, which are obviously working at height, not having tools falling out of your pockets. <laughs> so I've just warned the customer to not go out the side door while we're on the roof as well, so that they know what's going on. So we're all good to go. These panels get well hot when the sun's been on them a while. Yeah, I, uh, that's why I wanted to get this done first thing. Nimbus hosting, I had to lean across some and they were so hot. Yeah, they're already fairly hot, um, but with the gloves it's okay. Oh no, this one is the... Every time I try, I swear it's the different one. Just slide this down. That one will go to there and then that one will extend. So this one there. might want to be the extended one okay. through to that side, depending what plug's going to be available, because yeah. that one's already plugged into this one. Uh, we sort of had this question about, you know, is it safe to disconnect these while the panels are on and exposed to sunlight? Because technically there's a voltage there and they're generating right now. Now at the moment, this, pa this cable goes into this panel and then they loop together along to the end, up to the top panel and back. So that end that Lee's got there and this end here, technically there's a voltage between those. And if we plug them in, the voltage disappears, current flows around but it doesn't go anywhere. If we unplug them, then it technically it could arc between them. 
but the MC4s are fully sealed, there's no exposed live parts. So as far as I'm aware, they're designed to be able to disconnect under load. Not that it really is under load anyway as such, because there's no inverter connected. It's purely the voltage within the panels that is present. So let me know in the comments, guys, what you think. Am I way off or am I correct? And if you think I'm way off, tell me why. So I've just fished the rod across the lee there, well, throwing up his gang signs. So we're just gonna pull this draw wire over and then we'll get the rod through again. Then we've got to draw through both sides. Who wrapped up, what cowboy wrapped this cable up? Look at it. How is it so tangled? I can't get the staff these days. Look, look, what is this? You lassoing things. Yeah. Do you need the, the company tape? What is it with tape? Uh, I know what you mean by the company tape. What is it with tape that when you need some, you've never got it? Like the other day, I needed some brown tape. I couldn't find brown tape anywhere. I had to go to the wholesalers and buy some. And yet I'm sure when I don't need some, I have like 15 rolls lying around. And guys, just we need to re do a reassessment on the safety thing quickly because the landscapers have just come and they're just putting the slabs in. Now, obviously we said no one working on the ground because of risk of tools falling off. I think if we make sure we don't go within a meter of the edge, then we can make sure that nothing falls off without them having to stop work. So just for the moment until they're finished, if we just stay within the line of the, the rails, basically, I think we'll be all right then. Oh, tight, let me just- uh, Poked someone's eye out on the ground there. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll pull all the slack through. Doing next door's roof as well, apparently. <laughs> it's got voltage on it. No, it's just connected so could, to a DC isolator. So we can just do, we, I can make this one off. That's Absolutely, no, yeah. So what, make it that long, say? Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Don't you point your tentacles at me. We were talking about wearing a kilt the other day. Yeah, I'd black lava do a kilt. Well, uh, right now I'm glad you're not wearing a kilt right now. I'm glad you're not wearing a kilt right now. Bear in mind, I am a Scotsman as well. My mum's Scottish, so I would be a true Scot. Explains a lot, that fiery nature. Explains the Shrek twang. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of bird poo. <laughs> you want me to get them up? Yeah, this is uh, it's just bog standards. Tesco cleaning spray. John's diary is open for requests if anyone wants a specifically lavendery smell after he's worked at their house. What Jordan doesn't realise is part of the five star service. <laughs> I leave people's homes smelling like lavender. <laughs> I have some shaken back to put the freshness back as well. Go on, lick it clean. I wonder if you read the safety label. <laughs> Do not use on solar panels. <laughs> It's just annoying because the window cleaner came here like a few weeks ago when we did the job. Well that's all the panels back on, just in time for it to get hot, hot. It's 10 o'clock and the heat is building. So the guys are just gonna put the solar skirt back on now and we're gonna head downstairs and start fitting the battery. So here's the thing. Here we've got 10 panels in two rows of five. It's like that, okay? In our Libby inverter here, you've got two string inputs, but originally they specified that the maximum number of panels that we could connect was six kilowatts of panels. Now each of these panels is 41, 0.7 volts or something like that and they're 415 watts. 415 times 10 equals 4150 watts of panels total. So we thought oh great we're below the 6 kilowatts so that's fine we can connect them all in one string. Positive would go to this panel, negative uh, would go to this panel and then they just link to each other. So the string wiring ends up going like this, basically one big loop all the way around the panels back down to the inverter. This is how we did it originally. However, My Energy sent us this email saying that they'd revised the data sheet and that instead of, I think it was 6,500 watts per MPPPT, MPPPPP, MPPT string, now it's been revised down to 3,250 per MPPT string, which means Basically, each input, there's two inputs, you can only have 3,250 watts on each, and we planned to have 4,150. So what we've had to do is split this in half. So we break that there. We've run in another 
two string cables. One string cable now, it goes along and connects into here. So this is now one string. And so we've got another string here basically now. That then reduces the wattage per MPPT string to 2,075 watts per string which is below the 3,250, which means we're okay. However, that's not the only problem. In order to add another string, we need to add another DC isolator and another DC surge protection device, which means we're gonna to have to rejig stuff on here. So I'm gonna start doing that. The guys are gonna start mounting the Libby on the wall. Ruben's gonna be running in the earth cable to the main earthing terminal. And together, we're gonna to get it done. Now we're working on a full how to install a Libby video which will be coming soon but if you'd like to see a bit more in-depth view on the Libby and how it is installed for our first ever install that we did there'll be a link up here or in the description. It's so cool! It's so clever! Delivering someone's groceries. So in order to accommodate the additional DC isolator, what I'm doing is removing this AC isolator and we're going to put that down below here instead. Then we can put the additional DC isolator up above and it will match with this stuff. All the DC stuff will be above and the AC will be below. This DC surge protection, what we've got to do is basically add another surge protection device in here. However, I think it's going to be a bit tight. This is a fairly recent requirement for solar that it should have DC surge protection. So we just fit it as standard on all our installs. It protects for, say, there's like a surge lightning strike or something like that on the roof, or there's a surge in the area that could back feed into the inverter through the DC cables. We have one per string. However, normally we have a larger enclosure. If we've got two strings, we put a larger enclosure in. This is the one that we usually use for two strings, but it's, it's pretty mahusive. Um, so, I don't really know what to do, whether we swap that and then it just it is what it is, it's just got this huge thing, or whether we try and fit everything in there. Before working on anything, make sure you check to make sure it's dead. So that's all good. Luckily with these Wagos, they're just push fit connections, so we can literally plug and unplug them. So that's in, solid. And then you just push and you can pull it out. So it's not too difficult to make these alterations. The guys have got the Libby mounted on the, on the floor slash wall. So they're wired in parallel and they've got these comms cables that link between them so that the batteries can tell each other the state of charge and can communicate with the inverter. Each one has a DC switch to isolate the battery module individually. Um, and then it's got a power on off button at the front. We're gonna be taking the Libby supply off of this existing boiler spur. And then we're gonna refeed that so it's actually on this emergency power board. So if there's a power cut, the customer will always have their boiler on. So the idea is to feed the wiring center from this spur. So we've just got that fish down. We'll bring that into the live terminals here. We'll disconnect that one mil that's feeding the wiring center and just see that where he goes. And then we'll come out, replace this for a flex outlet plate. And then there'll be a bit of flex coming from here, up the trunk in, we'll pop out and the Libby controller is gonna go up here. So this is the additional DC isolator that we're putting in now. Eagle-eyed viewers will spot that there's something missing. So unfortunately the wholesaler didn't have the four pole one. So we're going to just use single isolation on this one. This one's double isolation where it goes through the isolator twice, but it's really a bit over the top to be honest. So we can just use single isolation on this one, use two out of the three poles and that'll do the trick. I'm just fixing that back and then I'm going to drill through this and put the AC isolator on as well. So we've got our MCS inspection assessment uh, on Friday, which is two days from now. 
Uh, so there's a lot of work going on in the office at the moment, just doing final prep on all the paperwork and things. And the job that we're going to take him on is the garage solar uh, job that we did. And I've got to go back there this afternoon and just do some final testing, put a document holder on the wall, put all the documents into place and just do a final check with Wayne and Harvey to make sure everything is dotted off and ready to, to go for the inspector on Friday. So I'm gonna shoot over there now. These guys are gonna crack on and finish off this and then I'm gonna come back at the end of the day and see how they've gone. So this is the problem with filling up the back of fuse boards with fire sealant. I'm the one that squared all this fire sealant in. Even though I knew there was good <laughs> I had to get another cable through. But lucky enough, I put a bonding cable in. So we're gonna use this as the draw wire, pull a new drawer in and then pull this as well as the, what's that cable called? RS-485. Uh, RS-485, what Lee said. That through and then that's gonna come through here and then up into the Libby controller, which is going up here somewhere. RS-485 connection. So this is the brain or the robot connection and the, the signal sent down to Libby to tell it when to take charge when it's XX Solar and what have you. All right, so what you've got here is you've got your DC cables which come down from your panels on the roof. They come through into your two DC isolators. So it comes in, goes through this contact and then out. So you've got your positive and your negative so they come through this is the top string that's the bottom string so you've got five panels on each then they come through into here into these wago connections so this side's for one string that side's for one string and each one they're linked across so you have an in and an out and then the link goes across into your dc surge protection so all this is for one string all that's for one string so from the isolator into the bottom here then through and up and then from the other spare ones, these cables, which I've already made, go down and plug straight into the inverter on the Libby. Positive, negative, string two, positive, negative, string one. So they just need to be fed into this box, string one, string two, then that cover can go on. Unfortunate, I don't think Jordan's drilled a big enough hole for all these cables, so looks like we're gonna have to do it. got everything tested out and it's safe to turn on so we're going to turn on our MCB and turn on our isolator in here so there's two isolators there's a means of isolation by inside by the fuse box and there's one by the Libby device which is required so we turn that on you can see our meters firing up I'm saying some random numbers but the important bit is reading zero now that's not flashing so it's drawing no load so once that's importing or exporting that will start flashing so now we're live up to here. So the isolate stopping power going through. Basically everything in electrics is just a posh switch. Another posh switch is here. So we fire that up. Oh, it's a stiff switch. There's one more thing to turn on. Oh, I should have done film this before, shouldn't I? So click that on. Our Libby starts waking up. So it's asking if this is the first device or an additional device. So we already have a Zappi that's gonna be the master. We're gonna change that to additional device. And then it asks you where the PV is connected to so this is it can be connected to the Libby it can be connected to a different separate system or not present and be used just as battery storage so this is going directly into the Libby and is it independent or parallel it is in parallel and is the backup connected to the Libby it is so we have it and it's Great Britain and it has asked you to confirm all of your settings so this is now our primary so this has all been set up and is on the latest software so we need to make it pair with the other one. So we go down to other settings, advance, enter the super secure passcode, and we put it into pairing mode. So it's searching for slaves or secondaries. It's not very PC. We're gonna do the same on here. So we're just gonna go down to advanced settings, super secret passcode, link devices, pairing mode. And now it's searching for a master. So you can see the Libby has come up, searching for slaves or secondaries, we'll select that. Now to have a question mark next to it while it's, we can only assume thinking, but <laughs> we're not too sure. Once that gets a squiggly line next to it, 
it's all paired up and then we don't have to do any adjustments on the Libby and it will just take all of its readings from here. Right, so that should be good now. If I go to the other one, to this, see this display, that should be mirrored on as well as the time and date on the other device. Now we're gonna fire up our strings. So string one, string two. So that switch I've just turned off is the emergency power supply. So it's not a U UPS, it's got a half a sine wave when it changes over. So if we turn this on now, that is feeding this emergency socket and this spur which powers up the boiler. So in the event of a power cut, they'll still have heating and hot water and this emergency socket to use. So as a part of the emergency board, you need to have a earthing backup. So we've installed this conduit disc, so this cable here is running down this conduit and it's a disc buried in the ground. So when it goes into effectively like an island mode, what can happen on the network is we might lose the neutral, which means we lose the earth. Putting in this secondary earth means that it's always gonna be earthed on the sockets in there, which are RCD protected. Time to introduce a new staff member. This is Harvey. Hello. He's been working for us for just over two weeks and he's really got a lot of experience with working for a previous solar company and stuff about MCS compliance. So he's been massively helping us with all the MCS paperwork prepping for Friday. But he's also got experience with this. This is the solar PV test meter that we've just got. It's, it's nice and shiny and new. You can see we've not even peeled the thing off yet. This is the first job we've actually got a chance to use it on because it's our first one where we're connecting PV directly into the inverter, a non-solar edge system. With solar edge, we tend to end up well, you can't really do many tests. The inverter does all the tests for you. But with this, we need to do all the DC tests. So Harvey's gonna show us the ropes and how this kit works so that we can get all our test readings. So this is an irradiance meter. It also measures temperature and pitch. And what it will do is wirelessly connect to our main tester downstairs, which will do the voltage, open circuit voltage, and the uh, short circuit current reading. And together, they'll give us all the data we need. So we've clamped it onto the side of the panel. To do that, we've had to remove a piece of solar skirt. That's clamped on securely, and we'll head downstairs and take our readings down at the strings. So we disconnected one set of string cables from the inverter, and now we've got to plug these into our PV tester. So what we do now, we've plugged in the two string cables into the tester. The transmitter is up on the roof and it's reading the uh, irradiance and the temperature. And now we press auto. And this reads now our voltage at a moment in time, so instantaneous, and the short circuit current. So that's the open circuit voltage and short circuit current and the watts per meter squared based on the irradiance reading up there. And it also does an insulation test reading. So we've got all the readings that we need basically to put on the certificate. So before we disconnect the tester, turn the isolator off, unplug the MC4s there. We'll plug these back into the inverter. So that was string two. Now we're gonna test string one exactly the same way. Plug our tester in. Boom and it's now saved in a special folder. Awesome. So along with Harvey, we subbed in Wayne from the office. Remember him? You might remember him from a previous episode. <laughs> and uh, we got rid of Lee, so it's been a lot of juggling today. You've seen pretty much the whole Artisan team apart from Erica and Nathan and Luke, because he's on holiday. I forgot to mention Dan, but he did pop in earlier, but the reason I didn't mention him is because he promised to bring drinks, cold drinks, and then he turned up with a half drank can of Coke in his hand. So normally starting up an inverter, you turn the DC on first. So we'll turn the DC on there. We'll turn the DC on here. We'll turn the battery switch on. Turn the load switch on as well. And then we'll turn the AC isolator on. So this inverter and battery system also does backup power for a few circuits, emergency power, John is gonna show you how it works. So to visually and audibly show you, I'm gonna plug Henry in. So he's powered on from this socket and this Martindale. And then I'm gonna turn the power off by cutting the power to the Libby battery. So as far as it's concerned, there's been a power cut. Working well. We'll turn this off. That's it. That's on a little bit, it's not got as much juice. We we'll fire that back on. You should hear that audibly kick up. Did you it? So now that's running off the mains power. But it didn't cut out at all. So they can't sell it as a UPS because there is a half a cycle 
break in the power, but it wasn't enough to interrupt Henry from doing its thing or the Martindale light. Right, so the temperature sensor is now connected to the meter and that's why we're getting our readings. So all of that information will be relayed now to our main meter downstairs and it helps us to get our configuration set up. So the additional DC surge protection device is in the additional string um, isolator, the additional DC isolator is in, that's moved. Um, string cables are all in and it's up and running. We're only generating 0.8 kilowatts at the moment, but that's because you know it's getting later in the day and the sun is a little bit down. Um, it is a south facing array, so it should get a really good amount of generation, especially at uh, sort of midday. Now obviously we've installed the Libby outdoors here. Now that's a first for us. We usually install them indoors in a garage or other secure location. It is rated to go outdoors, so it will be fine. Personally, my feeling is if it's possible to install it indoors, I would always go down that route just because realistically, no matter how good a product is, if it's getting exposed to the elements, it's more likely to deteriorate faster than if it is indoors. But uh, it looks pretty smart, you know, I'm pleased with the way it's all turned out, the way everything's laid down. The Libby controller needs to be inside because that isn't IP rated, so that's why we've put it on the inside but overall a nice finish. And what we've done is we've put it on a stand, a floor stand to raise the batteries up slightly off the floor so that if there was ever like a layer of water on the floor, say they're washing the car or there's a little bit of flooding, that the batteries are just standing a little bit off the ground. So a little mistake that we made here, which is an easy one to make when you're a usual Zappi installer is installing a separate CT for the solar. Normally, if we had an external inverter, like a solar edge inverter or something, you would put a CT around the solar circuit so that the My Energy system can read how much solar is being generated. But with the Libby being used as a solar inverter, you don't need that because the Libby controller tells all the data of how much solar is being generated. So all you need with the Libby is a grid CT, which we've got here around the main tail. That's it, you don't need a separate generation CT unless you're using the Libby as battery only and you've got solar elsewhere via another inverter. So it's been fun, another one ticked off the list. Few little teething issues, but we fixed it and we've learned stuff from it. And that's the thing guys, if you make mistakes, you learn from them and you don't do them again next time. So from me, it's goodbye and we'll see you on the next video.